Hey ho. Where are our pre slides? There we go. Um, and back. So, I mean, you know, after all those panels that we've had here, um, I, I actually wonder what I'm going to tell you. You had all the VCs there, you had all the accelerators there, you're good to go, right? Um, now, very, very quickly about me, he said it, I've, I've founded companies um, and, in, and in, in, am involved right now. It's I'm a, a venture partner at a very, very exciting accelerator program for education tech. So if you're in that um, area, talk to me. Um, or as an advisor, and if it doesn't scare you too much, I am um, a lawyer originally. Now, first things first, though, right? So um, who of you are founders? Quick raise of hands. Now then you will know this next slide, what that means, because if you are a founder, you will have these holy shit moments regularly. It is really scary. The world will come to an end right now, massive crisis. And you know what? This won't stop, with money or without. Um, it, will, it will not stop. Live with it because, it, you know, you'll come up on the other side. And then always remember, you know, there is a reason why you actually dare to jump um, uh, uh, and, you know, go back to just being awesome. Um, before you even think of raising money, make sure that you make something awesome. Because, frankly, you know, if you come up with a 30-second lame app for I don't know what, why would anyone give you money in the first place? Make sure it's awesome. Um, make sure it stands out. You know, it is, it is, there is absolutely no need for the umpteenth I don't know what. And then, while it's doing all that, tell a great story. So if you, <clears throat> I don't know, if you spent your life um, uh, uh, doing whatever mergers and acquisitions in the law firm, uh, you might, um, uh, uh, have the greatest story of all to tell when it, uh, when it comes to explain on why you would want to uh, run a, a green tech startup, but make sure you tell that story. If you can do that well, um, you know, users will follow you, and uh, more importantly, arguably also the money will follow you. And in whatever you do on the product side, I haven't even started on the funding side, um, make sure you deliver wow. Um, in an ideal scenario, you will over-deliver every single time. The story behind those, those flowers is um, uh, to be found in, in Tony Shea's book, Delivering Happiness. Tony Shea was the, the Zappos founder. Um, and there, <clears throat> there was uh, one day, um, um, one of their customer guys takes a call. And there's a, a girl on the line. And she says, I want to buy a pair of white heels. And the guy takes the order. And then he thinks, well, you know, when does a girl buy white heels? Um, so he Googled her name, and yes, she was getting married. So what Zeppos did is they upgraded her shipping to overnight, but they also sent her a bunch of flowers um, to go with it. Now, this, this woman will probably be a customer for life, and she will probably tell that story to all her friends um, because they absolutely over-delivered. If you're selling shoes or if you're building the next WhatsApp, make sure that you, that you bear that in mind and over-deliver whenever you can. It's a mobile conference, right? And this is about raising money for mobile startups. If you are here, and if you really need, to explain, need me to explain to you why mobile might actually be kind of important, um, you know, something, something's probably wrong in the world. It's the biggest freaking medium in the world, and you, you reach more people. And this is one of two or three mobile slides I have. <clears throat> because... Um, because frankly, you know, w there are exceptions, of course, but, but with most business ideas in the world today, if there is no mobile center point to it, my hunch is that you will probably uh, run into, into trouble at some stage. Okay, so we have an awesome product, right? You know all this, it is, it is freaking amazing. You've survived your first holy shit moments, um, and you're still there. You didn't run back into some lame, mediocre job that you really never want to do. Um, so we start. Money. How do you do this? The very first thing is, is bootstrapping, right? Sell your valuables, everything you have. Not only, not only grandma's gold bar, but also you know, that awesome car that you, that you, that you acquired. Um, because frankly, <coughs> 
before there is anything, you know, you, it, it, it's, it's kind of hard, um, you know, to get, to get, to get anywhere um, on, the, on, the, on the cash side. Now, <clears throat> then the next one, that's where you first tap into, into other people's pockets. Uh, friends and family, you know, sometimes is all, all you might need if you're born into the right family. Um, but, um, but nonetheless, it's the first, um, the first uh, source of funding for many, many people. And there's, there's reasons for it, because your friends believe in you, um, and they know you, and there is a, you know, they will arguably share passions with you, and they know why. Your family will love you, even though they might not actually share any passions with you, but they will still love you and uh, want you to succeed, and therefore there's a very good chance that, uh, that, they, um, uh, that they were happy. However, I mean, this is Vegas, right? But this is also Vegas. Um, so be very, very careful. Um, because of all that love and trust that exists in your, in your, in, amongst your friends and family, you must make sure that you structure it really well. Because you generally don't want to fall out with investors of any kind, but if you fall out with friends and family over an investment decision, um, uh, you know, that makes your life, not only for your little startup, but you know, for you as a person, um, probably a lot, lot harder. So, um, um, and that's something I would, I would suggest you start considering before you actually ask anyone, um, uh, uh, because then you can go and say, look, you know, I love you, this is what I want to do, and um, uh, you know, I need money, here, here are my thoughts. Um, and if it's well structured and clear and fair, um, I think you have, you have decent chances that even if you fail, and you know, a lot of startups do fail, but then even if you fail, you know, they will still be your friends and still be your, your loving family rather than some feuding one. Um, there's another reason though, because the, the first external funds you raise will be the most expensive money ever. And there's a clear reason for it, because it's, it's, you, know, you have the lowest valuation your company will ever have, unless you go bust, then it's even lower. Um, but um, uh, you know, when, you're, when, you're, when you're in the raising stage, it is, you, know, you will never give away, or arguably never give away, as much of a chunk of company for that little money than you will, than you will in this. Um, and um, again, if it's well-structured and fair, you, know, you, you retain this equilibrium, um, and then that's fine, but it is something to consider. Now, you've burned through however much you've raised there, um, and you had your holy shit moment, but then you think, hey, the future's bright, right? So I have a startup up, up and running. I actually found people who were willing to give me money, even though they were friends and family, so surely now the, the world's my oyster. And then, you know, we've all heard about Y Combinator and 500 startups, you know, they do it every day. You know, there's almost, you know, there's a Twitter and a Square almost every day. I mean, none of them came out of those two. But, um, so that's kind of easy, isn't it? I mean, there's so many out here we, 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 we've seen. The trouble is, <clears throat> when it comes to 500 startups and, and Y Combinator and the few other rock star um, programs, um, they're, they're long, long queues. That's actually the business model they have, right? There is just, there's thousands of applications and, and that then makes sure that you know, the stuff that comes through the funnel hopefully has a slightly better chance to succeed than, uh, uh, than, than, than the rest, at least if we assume that they're, that they're vetting well. And you've, you've seen a couple of them on stage here just now. You know, they're, <coughs> oops, sorry. They know their stuff, um, so you know, uh, uh, you, shouldn't, you shouldn't assume this. There's another issue though, and that's location. Um, Y Combinator and, and, um, and Firefighter Startups, they're in the Valley, um, or in, in San Francisco, respectively. Now, if you're not there, um, you know, that might not apply to you. It's good news, though, because there's others, right? We had way right here. There's people like Hoop Round. Microsoft Ventures runs an accelerator program now in, in, um, in many cities around the world. Um, then you have things that are, that are sector specific, less of them, but I, I mentioned Emerge, um, which is education focused. And they don't only, for instance, you know, they're smaller programs generally, but because of, the, because of, their, of their sector expertise, they can actually go, in Emerge's case, for instance, you know, we don't only provide the normal mentoring program, 
bit of cash, bit of this, office support, da 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 but also access into the, your first customers. You know, Emerge, for instance, partners with Eaton College and Oxford University and a bunch of schools. So if you're in education, you actually, during that acceleration program, you know, get direct access immediately. Um, and people are not only in, in, um, in, uh, 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 in the Valley or in Berlin or in London. LaunchUp is based in, in, in Sofia. They make, a, they, make a, you know, they make a wonderful job there. And the coolest accelerator in the world, I think, is Alice. They're based out of Beirut. Um, and who would have thought that? They're here with 15 startups, I think. So, um, uh, uh, you know, that works. <clears throat> the, the most important thing for you to consider is not, you know, whose cohort is, is, is hiring at the moment, um, but, you know, what is their focus and does that actually um, fall in line with your focus? Um, and that, is, that, that applies to geographical focus, uh, the focus that applies to, 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 um, to, to topical things, you know, to what is the sector, what's the vertical you address. Some people might be stronger in one than another. Um, uh, you know, just don't go and say, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, you know, here's another program I need to apply to, here's another program I need to apply to. Um, it will do a couple of things. Uh, it will, A, probably lead to a lot of frustration and more holy shit moments, um, but it will, B, take time away from you building that awesome product that you need. Um, so make sure that, you, that you're selective in what you do. And, you know, there's a, there's a very um, um, uh, 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 easy one. You know, always focus on this. Um, this is the by now very, very famous um, um, note on, on WhatsApp's wall. Um, and arguably, they always went back to that um, uh, and focus. And we all know how that ended. Um, in order to find out about that stuff, you know, I, I, would, I would simply say, look, you know, do your research. There's things like Quora. I mean, you might, you know, if your LinkedIn network is any, 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 anything you work with, you should. You know, there are, there's tons of, of meetups. There are co-working spaces that run events in that respect. Speak to fellow co to fellow founders. Um, uh, you, will, you will find out a lot in a very, very short amount of time. Um, and there is no excuse for not doing your research on this. So if you basically, if you happen to apply for, I don't know, an accelerator that specializes in nurseries, um, you should not be surprised that, that um, uh, you know, they might actually be not the right thing for your tech startup afterwards. You should, you should have done your research. Next stage. You know, you've gone through this, and now it starts getting a little bit more serious because, uh, um, you know, you need a little bit more money. Um, you're still very early stage and very young. Um, so you think angel investors. We all heard them. Um, God knows how they look. But um, and they come in very different flavors, right? And they, they come from experienced founders who were lucky enough to, to, to have a great exit. Um, uh, you have sometimes, you know, just, just uh, people that, that in, in, a, in a different world might have acted at what they call family offices, i.e. people from families with a ton of money. Um, um, they come in, very, in, in, in different flavors. Really cool. Now, angel investment, the very first thing you think about is someone like this, right? Because, because, you know, Ashton comes in, it's not only money that comes in, but you get the whole glam effect as well. Um, and um, the, the, again, the trouble is, you know, how on earth do you get to the guy? How do you, how do you, how do you get his attention? And um, uh, uh, so on and so forth. Again, though, it's location that is quite, quite important. You will find in California probably more active angels than in most other parts of the world. Um, however, you do find angels all over the world, literally. Um, what I said earlier, though, with a view to, to focus and fit and all the rest of it, make sure you don't actually run down the, 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 um, the first avenue available for you, um, to you, because those guys will, again, take a fairly big chunk of your, of your money and they will have a fair amount of, 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 of influence and they can, act, you know, um, uh, uh, they can cause trouble. So, you know, London has b big angel networks. Um, um, Spain has one um, um, as a whole. Barcelona as a cluster has, has, uh, 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 has angels. 
just make sure that you, that you, that you speak to the right ones. Um, you know, look at things like AngelList, depending on, uh, uh, the British Angel Association is, is, is purely by, by, by example. Um, there's networks literally all over the world, try and, um, try and hit them. There's one tip though, um, don't ever pay to pitch. And this is, it's, it's a nasty side of, of business. There are people all over the place, I won't name names, no shaming here today, but um, that basically make it their business, you know, you, you say, okay, um, hey, do you want to pitch to a hundred of the country's leading angels? You know, it's only $2,000 to get in. Where I'm thinking, look, so what they're doing is they ask guys that don't have money to pay in order to speak to guys who have more money than they need because otherwise they wouldn't have money to invest. That is just, I think, um, wrong. So um, stay strong on this one. Um, again, do your research, right? It is, it's, um, it's the same thing. Depending on where you are and, and who, you, who specifically you're looking for, and this is the reason why, why, why there are so many people out there who ask you to pay to pitch, Angels can be a bit more elusive. In the, in the, in the, in the days of, of angel list, though, um, and, um, uh, uh, and equivalent sites, things have gone, gotten a little easier. You know, most of the active ones you should be able to find, um, uh, you know, without paying someone to find the truffles for you. Here's another one. You can found, uh, fund your start up by revenues, generating revenues. Who would have thought, right? What a novel concept. Um, and um, it, is, it is something, again, it, depend, you know, it depends on what you do. If, if, if basically you pursue a startup that relies heavily on network effects, therefore you need huge user numbers for it to even make sense, you know, it's probably more important to chase those user numbers before you focus on this. However, many, many, many startups, you should be able um, to find a revenue angle actually fairly early on. And because if you're an early stage startup, you're, you know, your overhead and your, won't be that high, so you don't actually have to generate $100 million a year in order to make it work. Um, but it is, you know, every dollar that you make yourself is a dollar you don't have to um, uh, raise from someone else in return for equity. Um, so that is something I would, um, I would bear in mind. The thing is, you know, users are valuable. Paying users are even more valuable. Um, and um, uh, by way of example, um, Tony Shea, I'm a fan, as you probably can tell by now. So Zappos wasn't actually his first exit. His first exit was Link Exchange, um, which a company in their heyday, um, they reached half the internet every day. Um, um, and they started generating revenues first. Uh, they did one fairly small round. And then um, I think it was two and a half years in or so, did a fairly large exit. Um, and the, the company was propped up in inverted commas on the back of their first revenues um, that actually uh, managed to, to, um, uh, to fund the company to, for, for quite a while. Now then, now I come to the big boys. Venture capital. You're speaking to the institutionals now because you know, um, even if you have angel money, normally it doesn't really get you all the way. So at some stage, you might hit the funding need that only institutional investors can, 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 can satisfy. Um, and then you go in and you go, whoa, 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 whoa. You know, um, because VC, unless they're sitting on stage, they're a bit rare. They're quite powerful and they can also be, you know, a little bit scary. Um, because you stand there and those are the guys, you know, and they sit here leisurely. So how much do you have on the management? Oh, just over $2 billion. And you think, um, okay, you know, um, I just want a little bit, please, because um, I, you know, it's, uh, I'm a first time founder, I'm really excited and I have this awesome product and can we please? So, venture capital, it, it's, it's, I mean, we can, we can talk about for hours about this and this was my challenge with doing this, this, this presentation here for you because in 30 minutes, um, that's a bit of a harsh one. So four things on this. <clears throat> know your shit. Really do. Um, uh, don't, 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 don't cold call them. Always remember to do awesome stuff. 
And then the last one is possibly the most important one because pitching to investors is an, is, is an important part of work. You know, it is not you go out and you build your product, you build your product, and you build your product. oh, sorry, honey, I need to run. There's a, an investor pitch, and then you waltz in there, and you, 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 you stand there, and you don't really know how to pitch. Um, and no one does when, when they do it the, the, for the very first time. Um, so, you know, do practice. Don't forget this. Don't be proud, um, uh, uh, too proud to, to, to learn. Um, you know, stand in front of the mirror and deliver your pitch. And it's really embarrassing when you do that, but I can tell you one thing. The time, when the time comes and you really pitch, your pitch will be a whole lot better. Know your shit. So, we've heard about the awesome product, right? Now, if, however, it takes something like this to explain what you're doing to an investor, you are likely to, you know, to, to lose. If you go in there and you say, well, you know, let me actually explain to you, and this is, and actually it's really easy, and then half an hour later you're still sort of like in the easy user journey that you will deliver to the world, probably not. Um, we've had that before, focus and passion um, um, are a huge part of that, and, um, um, you know, this is probably way too much legend and truth behind this, but... Um, uh, it, it actually helps you um, to formulate this, this, this you know, very clear message that, that is at the very, very core of that. If you walk in and it takes you five minutes to explain that you're the 39th company which does a fairly lame app for, dude, Android, um, then, you know, it's, it's not only will you fail, but you will certainly fail to catch the attention of, of, any, of any investor, and in particular, um, an institutional. Now, this don't cold call thing is, you know, if, you've, if you ever Googled venture capital, that is probably one of the first articles that comes up. And there's people who are telling you why and all the rest of it. And, you know, you could say it's a little bit patronizing, right? Because Dude, you know, I mean, I'm a first-time founder. Yet until last year, I worked in in some other company. I'm I'm not rubbing shoulders with with uh, Tom Perkins, Scott Beware, um, and um, so how do you do this? But there's a there's a there's a very good reason for this, um, and that is this. So if you do cold call, you know, you land, you're you're probably this this I don't know the very left that little pamphlet there. And you will probably get as much attention. Um, and that is not because the guys are arrogant and, 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 uh, um, and couldn't care less, but because if, if you're you know, any normal VC, um, you, will, you will probably get thousands of cases sent to you through every bloody available channel um, every year. Now, the whole don't cone call thing is, as with everything else in, 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 in life that, isn't, that, isn't, um, um, uh, that doesn't only apply to, to, uh, to venture capitalists, but um, you know, if someone introduces me to someone saying, look, I really think you should speak to that person because she's really great, um, you know, I'm, I'm much more open um, uh, to take that because it basically comes vetted by someone I trust. Um, and, um, and that's an important factor. Now then, again on this one, timing is, is of the absolute essence. And that is also why it is so important to know your shit. Because, you know, this number, that's the number of chances you will get to pitch your thing to this one guy. So if you screw it up, you're probably done. Now, then you sit there, first time founder, really still a bit shy and never done this before. And you think, you know, but I don't know anyone. How on earth do I do this? And the only thing I can say is, you know, research and use your networks. Um, uh, you know, today, whoever is in here, you should now know Bulletin, Samsung, who else there was, um, plus all the accelerators. There is no reason why you should not be able to connect with those guys. You know, Google the name, you will have the email address, da -da -da -da, drop them a line, 
without pitching, but just saying, look, I've seen you on stage today. I thought this was really interesting. Da -da 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 -da. Next time something comes, they will have heard your name. Already a different story. Then go research, you know, who do you know in your network, um, uh, uh, you know, who could help you there. If you don't know anyone, start engaging online. It is, you know, I mean, there's, in, at this day and age, there is absolutely no excuse um, not to do that. Now and then, you're at the gates. Um, you got that meeting. Uh, they want to see you, which is good, because they don't normally go see people if they're not at least interested. They don't know too much about you yet because, you know, you've got a warm intro, maybe you've sent them a little deck or so, but they haven't, now, what now? Other than heartbeat and the holy shit moments galore. But, um, um, so you walk in there, and you know, because you're a shy first time founder, you think, you know, well, all I need really is like $100,000. And then, you know, I mean, that surely gets me over the line. And it is such a huge mistake. Make sure you ask for enough. And enough is always more than you think you need. Um, and it's probably quite a bit more than you think you need. Um, and the reason for that is not, you know, so you can go out and say, dude, I raised five, I raised five million in my first round. You know, what, what, what can you do? The reason is that if you don't raise enough, you will be in eternal fundraising mode. And fundraising is hard, hard work. Um, and it will take up a lot of your time. And again, all that is time that is taken away from building an awesome product. And in particular, when you have external funding secured, um, that means you know, there, is a, there is a different kind of pressure mounting on you. Because, hey, all of a sudden, there is guys that, that, you know, whose business it is to make money with you, uh, from you. So you know, if you don't perform on your business, you know, they will come asking. Um, the way to do it is to, to frame it the right way. You know, the first time you were thinking about <clears throat> your, your, your business, very often was because you stumbled across a problem that needed a solution. Old school stuff. Um, and, um, you know, then you started thinking, well, you know, maybe if I have that problem, someone else will have that problem. And then you start building this until you think, hey, this is actually quite good. But, you know, if you frame it the right way, you can make a lot of businesses very, very big, potentially. Um, if you frame it wrong, though, even the biggest potential becomes a much smaller potential. And that is why, here's my second mobile slide. Um, if you model it well, you will you will realize one of two things. You will either realize that you don't scale at all, and that might then also mean that you are not actually investable from a venture perspective. Um, um, or you will see, oh wow, look, you know, I actually can scale. And this is where mobile is so, so amazing, because you know, on mobile you, 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 ac you actually can hit not only the 50,000, 100,000, five million people that live where you live, but you can, you can reach the world instantly. And that makes it so big, and you get that hockey stick that everyone loves so much. And if you need more proof that mobile scales, you know, we've heard it all before. Um, uh, I'm not discussing if the valuation was right or wrong, um, but, uh, but it works. <clears throat> On the team side, you need rock stars. You need absolute freaking rock stars. Um, and the only thing I would tell you is, look in the mirror, remember why you did this, why you started this, why you thought it was a good idea in the first place. And I assume here that you're completely daft. You know? But if you're a founder, you're probably gutsy and, and, and a little bit intelligent. So there was a good reason, um, and make sure that you have it. However, also be honest to yourself, and when, you know, when there are huge gaps in your team, make sure you hire other rock stars to do it with you. If the product is as good as you say, and if you're as passionate as you should be, you should also be able to find other rock stars. Remember, do awesome stuff, and not this, and then everything will be good. Thank you very much. Oh, last slide. I have 33, 2, 1 seconds for questions. Otherwise, I'm here all day, all week, in fact. Sorry. And all night. Thank you.
Or do we have questions? I couldn't see anyone. It's late. Thanks, guys. Thank you very much, Mark.